Let's look at the today's scripture together, book Acts, chapter 22, verse 30, and chapter 23, verse 1 to 10. 我们一起来吧, Let's read the scripture together, and you can choose your preferred language. But are you sitting to judge me according to the law and yet contrary to the law you ordered me to be struck? Those who stood by said, would you revile God's high priest? And Paul said, I do not know, brother, that he was a high priest, for it is written, you shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. Now when Paul perceived the blood, one part was Sadducees and others Pharisees. Perhaps the brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees, because it was struck to hope in the resurrection of the dead that I am my child. And when he has said this, a dissension arose between Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor is there no spirit, but the Pharisees acknowledge them all. Then a great clamor arose, and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contended sharply, we find nothing wrong in this man, what if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? And when the dissension became violent, the tribune afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by force and bring him into the barracks. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you have given us your word. Please help us, those who speak, translate, and listen. And please give us the spirit that reveals yourself and your wisdom so that we can truly meet you face to face. We pray this in Lord Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How many of us are here gathering last week? Raise your hand. Last week when you were here, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, the second question. What's the difference between last week's chapel and this week's chapel? None. None, right? The windows are the doors of the same places. But do you remember when we first gathered here five years ago, what was the chapel looking like? There was a huge difference. If you want to know what the difference was, you can ask one of our co-workers for pictures. But not only the chapel, our lives are just as such. Maybe a day or two, a week or so, you cannot see the change. But in God's hand, the change of life is a very amazing thing. Do you know what happens in one year? In one year time, the brothers that gathers with us can grow 10 centimeters or 3 inches. And what about 2 years or 5 years? Maybe we don't notice these things. But these things occur naturally. And, and if we actually expand the time horizon, five, maybe even ten years, the life that we live on earth and our spiritual lives will have a tremendous change because the essence of life is in its transformation.
在使徒行传的后半段, In the second part of Book of Acts, 我们看到圣灵花着很大量的笔墨在保罗这个人的身上. We see that the Bible has spent a lot of time on this Paul. 我们也看到保罗是如何回应圣灵的声音. And we see how Paul has responded to the Spirit. 即便他知道说他要面临迫害, 他依然决然地要决定回耶路撒人. Even though he knew that he was going to face persecution, he has decided to go back to Jerusalem. Maybe we would think, this is very natural. He is Paul. He is apostle. Of course, he would listen to God. But was Paul always like that? If we look back in time, when Paul was young Saul, and that time Paul was very indifferent, lacked empathy. At that time, Paul also persecuted Christians. When, do you remember when Stephen was stoned? What was Paul doing? He chose to stand aside in silence. Do you remember when the councils of um, the Jewish Council has decided to persecute the Christians severely? What was Paul doing? He was on the front line. He was personally there to capture and persecute Christians. But the wheel of fortune turns. So when he's back in Jerusalem, now in front of the council that he is so familiar with, he has changed entirely. His life is entirely turned around. He has presented himself with a different personification. In last week's scripture, we have seen after Paul was captured, his speech in Jerusalem has caused a, uh, a riot. The, uh, all the people in Jerusalem wanted to get rid of him. But for the, um, for the person who is in charge of keeping Paul, the, cat, the, the tribune, because Paul is a Roman, if he wants to charge Paul with a prison sentence, he must clearly know what Paul did wrong. And yet, he didn't even know why Paul's speech caused such clamor among the people. And let alone, he would not know what crime Paul actually committed. But one thing he was sure. If you can cause a clamor of this size within Jerusalem, it must be related to religion. If it's religiously related, then who should he go to? The high priest and the council. So the tribute came to the high priest and the council. At the time, the Roman had a military control of the Israel, land of Israel. So as the tribune, he had a lot of power. When he had something to say to the council, he... He came to the whole council. Including the high priest, all had to listen to him. So we come to the scene here today. The tribune brought Paul in front of the high priest and the council. And of course, this gave Paul an opportunity. And in front of the council that he is so familiar with, 
To present his testimony and his change. So when Paul sees the people in the council, he stared at them intently. Paul said, Brothers, I have lived my life before God in all good conscience up to this day. This is the first sentence Paul said to the council, according to the Bible. What's interesting is, this sentence is not a defense for Paul, but rather a proclamation for his faith. And if you think of this in a usual way, Paul should immediately give out his defense. And yet he is Paul. He has the reason and capability to defend for himself. And who is Paul? A Pharisee of Pharisees. He is uh, familiar with the law ever since he's young. And he is from a very renowned school. And his teacher, Gamaliel, is crowned the glory of the law. And his teacher is one of the greatest teacher of law in the, in the Jewish history. He is a very good student too. So at that time, very few would compare to Paul in his, similar, his familiarity to the law. So not only Paul is very well taught in the law, he actually lived according to the law. In Philippians, he said that as to righteousness under the law, I am blameless. So for someone who understood the law and lived according to the law, of course he would know how to defend for himself in front of the council. And of course, furthermore, the reason why he is arrested is because someone said he disobeyed the law. But when he first arrived in Jerusalem, he actually carried out the purification ceremony with brothers. His actions are entirely according to the law. This is not what he said. Everyone can see that. So Paul had the valid reason, the capability to be able to defend for himself. But yet at this crucial moment, Paul chose to, procla uh, to proclaim his faith. Why is that? Because this proclamation is more important than his safety. Here, Paul first mentioned conscience. He said, with good conscience. What is conscience? When we talk about conscience in our lives, what do we mean? Is that we depend, we have this benchmark of moral values. For example, as mothers, you often tell your kids, you child, you don't have a good conscience. What does that mean? Which is, means according to the mother's standard for the kids. He, this kid failed. And, but what does the kid feel? What does the kid say? You don't understand me at all. What do you mean I don't have any conscience? Now, what is this kid's standard? It's his own benchmark against himself. So everyone's conscience is different. So everyone lives their own life according to their own conscience or benchmark. This is the conscience that we often talk about. 
。但是保罗在这里说的根据良心有一个限定的词。But here, when Paul talk about conscience, is there a limitation? 他说是在神的面前根据良心。He said his conscience is before God. 确实还是根据良心。So of course it is according to conscience. 但是那个是能摆到神面前的良心。But this is this is conscience that could be placed before God. 也就是按照神的标准来看。So this means that this conscience is according to God's standard. 啊，这个就不是按照妈妈的标准。This is a your not this is not your mother's standard. 对，妈妈的标准做不到的话。If you fail your mother's standard. 你妈妈就可能打打你，骂骂你。Your mother probably beat you up or yell at you. 对吧？不行就断你的口粮，对不对 ？Or take away your allowance. 你要是单独一个人留学出来 ，And if you're um a studying abroad, 你也不太用在意嘛，毕竟山高皇帝远，对不对 ？You may not care as much because she's far away. 这个也不是按照我们自己的标准 ，And this is not our own standard either. 因为我们的标准 ，Because sometimes our standard， 呃，有时候可能还不如妈妈的标准高 ，Probably falls short of your own mother's. This conscience here is according to God. 也就是你的事，所有的事情摆在神的面前，神觉得没有问题。Which means when you place all these things before God, God thinks it's okay. 一两件事情来按照神的标准，我觉得我们还是可以的。Well, maybe one or two things according to God's standard we would pass. 但是保罗在这里还提到一个时间的限制。But Paul here mentions a time limitation. 就是直到今日。Which is up to this day. 什么意思 ？What does that mean? 意味着他所有的行为和决定。That means all of his decisions and his actions. 每时每刻，直到今日。Every second up to this day. 他都是按照神的标准来活的。They are all according to God's standard. 他不在意别人，他也不在意自己。He doesn't care about other people. He doesn't care about himself. 他在意的是神。All he cares about is God. Only God is his standard. And how dare one to say that? How would one be able to accomplish that? There's only one possibility. Is that this person truly cares about God? So much so that all he thinks and ponders and, does, and all he does Is all to please the God, the Lord. 靠着神的恩典。So that depending on God's grace. 他才有可能每天都按着神的标准来行事为人。That he can actually live out his life according to God's standard. 因为保罗的心里总想着讨主的喜悦。Because Paul thought about pleasing God every single second. 所以他就总想着按着神的标准来行事为人。So he would live his life according to God's standard. 神给他够用的恩典。God gave him enough grace. 他就能做得到。So he can accomplish this. 这也让我们看到一个属灵的原则。And this allows us to see a spiritual principle. 我们属于主的人。That us who belong to the Lord. Our life can be actually rather simple. Because 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 our life Because the delicious food always attracts us. So we often cook a lot of delicious food at home. But if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of delicious food at home, but if we often cook a lot of There's a person that cooks for you very often. You will know the question that she or he asks very often. You will know the question that she or he asks very often. What are we eating today? So, 美食是不可以辜被辜负的嘛，对不对 ？Of course, we won't let down of our good food. 但是如果每天都柴米油盐 ，But if we do this mundane task every day, 每天都要来做吃的 ，And every day we have to cook. And that's very tiring. 
。但历史上却有一个人却很不一样。But in history, there's one person that's very different. 哎，他的工作就是在修道院给别人做饭吃。His job is to cook in the monastery for other people. 同样是做饭。And of course, we're cooking all the same. 我们做的是饭。We're cooking food. 他是在为着神而工作。This person is working to uh, working for God. Ah, 同样是做饭 And it's the same task of cooking. Ah, 我们看到的是一天天重复的机械的工作 We see a manual repeat of labor. 但是他看到的是一次次讨主喜悦的机会 And yet he sees an opportunity to please the Lord. Ah, 所以同样是做饭 So of course the same task of cooking. 我们可能心里是常常有怨恨的 Maybe we have complaints all the time. But yet he experiences joy and peace all the time. He is the brother Lawrence. And this is brother Lawrence. Also, he is the author of the practice of the presence of God. He is not a famous pastor. 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 Through him, God has displayed to everyone a person who truly has a belief of Christianity. Even if he has a very usual, common, ordinary life, he can carry out an amazing life because he has truly lived through God. And same as Lawrence. Paul's heart is just as such. Even though he became a pastor, he still served the Lord. 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 At a in the middle of a trial, he can let go of a defense to testify for our Lord. Choose to show his faith. To to have a proclamation for his own faith. Because he clearly knows. This is what God told him to do. This is what God told him to do. And if God told him to do this, and if God told him to do this, he should go do it successfully. So he can please God. Lawrence is not famous for his work. 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 We know that doesn't matter. It's in China or in North America. You will find your life is very busy and very complex. Our lives are probably a little bit complicated and very busy. Our brothers and sisters here may have to work five days a week, but they only have five hours of sleep every day. And some of the brothers here are work so much they probably only sleep five hours a day. He could be very busy. He could be very busy. But our life can actually be very simple. Our life can evolve around one principle, which is to please our Lord. We could be very busy on the outside and yet have that peace on our inside. When we choose to live for our Lord, God will be responsible for our lives. And maybe some of you would ask now. I would want to live for God. I want to please our God. And how would I know the things that I think about or do now are according to God's standard and it is pleasing to Him? I think I'm doing well in all good conscience, but how do I know this is what I think or God thinks? And the secret is often come to God's word so that we can obey his word. God's word is like a ray of light and the conscience is the window of our heart. When the light is very strong, our heart will shine through. The light will shine through the window upon our hearts. When we are willing to accept the Lord's word, our heart will shine through the window upon our hearts. When we are willing to accept the Lord's word, 
the window in our heart will be uh, will be brighter. And our conscience will have will be more sharp. And we will have a better judgment. When we're wrong, through our conscience, God will tell us. And when we're right, God will encourage us. And when someone does not accept God's word, his, uh, the conscience of his heart will become darker and darker. And his conscience will grow slow and dim. And even so, to the point where it will be an evil conscience or a seared conscience. Be because when the window of your heart is darker and darker, even when you do something wrong, you would not even notice. This is why a lot of uh, spiritual elders will remind us that we should read God's word often. And we must often obey God's word. So after Paul said this sentence, immediately the high priest ordered him to be struck on the mouth. And Paul, even though struck on the mouth, he continued to speak. He pointed out that this person who's sitting to judge did not trial uh, according to the law and yet ordered him to be struck. And some would say that here Paul is really angry. And that's why he started yelling and saying these things. And he said, you whitewash wall. And whitewash wall here really means someone is hypocrite. This person who is sitting to judge the trial should obey the law. But this high priest is just pretending he did not obey the law at all. It's clear here that Paul did not say this out of anger. He actually had a valid reason. At that time when the council is trialing, sitting on the trial, if someone is not condemned, you have to treat the defendant as innocent. And for someone innocent, you cannot uh, order him to be struck. And even in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 15, in John also chapter 18, when our Lord is going through trial for the same thing, our Lord did not agree that at that time the high priest could order someone to be struck before the trial. If our Lord has said this action is not right, then we don't have a reason to doubt Paul. And what's interesting here, when Paul here pointed out what the judge did wrong, or the high priest did wrong, is not according to his own thought, but according to God's word. He didn't say, uh, I think you did wrong, I think you didn't do well. Uh, this judge is a little bit fishy. And what he said was, this action was not according to God's word. In Paul's eyes, and something is right or wrong, a person's action, whether or not is of value, it's not um, according to what men thought or what men uh, or who did this. But rather, whether or not this action in this person was a, did so according to God's word and God's will. Perhaps this should be our standard and rule when living in life. 
And Paul's word here also caused disagreement to those around him. And those around him pointed out to Paul, The person who trialing you is a high priest. How dare you to um, reveal your, your, the high priest? But Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest. And here, Augustine and Calvin all think what Paul is saying, I did not know he was a high priest, should really be translated that I, it's not obvious, I can't see and I can't really under, you know, understand that he is a high priest. It is a sarcasm, a sarcasm towards the high priest. If Paul really knew or is obvious that this is a high priest, how dare Paul say you whitewash wall? Because according to the scripture, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. So if I speak evil of a ruler of your people, then I would be disobeying the law. But Paul here did not disobey the law. It really means is that this high priest did not act and doesn't seem like a high priest at all. And this is a great sarcasm. He is the high priest of the temple at the time. It should have been the person who truly represented God. But now you don't see any shred of God's image on him. A true high priest should be able to reveal God's grace. And through God's authority, he would be able to try and carry out judgment according to God's standard. But this high priest only had his stature. His action, his character, did not, was not like a high priest at all. God gave us this identity as a priest here on earth. And also gave, him, uh, gave his life for us. We should be able to live out a beauty of his life. We should be able to let those around us see the beauty of the Lord through our lives. The uh, aristocrats in Europe really cared about their bloodline, their blue blood. They really care about the purity of their bloodline. The most familiar royal family that we know of is the Windsor. And if we talk about the Windsor, who are you most familiar with? I think it would be the recently deceased Queen Elizabeth. As the Queen, his her every single action in public light would all be have to conduct it according to the royal family's rule. So in our um, mind, in our memory, she is always elegant. We never would see, we never caught a glimpse of her embarrassing moments. And wouldn't she have nature calls just like us commoners? Maybe if my leg is itchy, I'll scratch it. And my nose is uncomfortable, I'll pick it. I, I think she must have. But she doesn't do it. Why? Why wouldn't she just carry out whatever she desires? It's all because of her stature and her identity. She does not represent herself. She represents the entire royal family of the British uh, country. 
很小的说, and if we talk about in a small sense, the successful visit would increase the public opinion and also have more um, support for the royal family. And if you talk about in a broad sense, a, a visit of, from her would be able to stabilize the whole commonwealth. And on, on earth, we used to represent ourselves. But now we're not that old self. We have Jesus' life in us, and we have this identity as a priest on earth. So we do not, we no longer represent ourselves. And everything that we do, and everything that we are, all represent God himself. So God also gave this grace for us to choose. Just like Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 接下来, and continue. 保罗看到公会中, Paul sees that half of these crowd is Pharisees and half is Sadducees. And here he explained that he used to be a Pharisee. But now he is different. And even now, he, the reason why he is on trial is the hope for resurrection of the dead. We know that the Pharisees and Sadducees are all important members of the Israel. The Sadducees are actually the powerful people amongst the Israel Council. They are very fond of and zealous for power, fame, and money, but they're very cold towards their own religion. So that's why they don't believe in resurrection or angels or spirits or Messiah. And what about Pharisees? And they are the uh, former rabbis. They are an important sect in the Judaism. They are very respectful for laws. In particular to the oral laws, rules, and traditions. And it seems like they are very different. But they have a common point. Is that they have their own understanding towards their belief. And in particular, they are very insistent in their own belief. And they all truly cared about their own value in this lifetime. Paul here said he is a Pharisee, a son of Pharisee. And he grew up in a tradition like this. He is truly influenced by the culture. And you see that when he grew up, he was also insistent on his own belief. He even killed for his belief before. Paul here, in particular, mentioned his identity. It's to call the, upon these Pharisees and Sadducees. See, I'm just the same. Back then, I also insisted on the things that I thought was right. But now I'm different. And now, even the fact that I'm on trial is actually for the hope of the resurrection of the dead. 
What is the hope for the resurrection of the dead? And Paul here mentioned that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And the resurrection of the dead is actually because and because the Christ's resurrection, every person that belongs to Christ does not truly die. But when the Lord comes back, we will all resurrect and we will live in eternity. So every person who believes God have this hope of the resurrection. So it's not that when we die, we faint away. It's not that when we live, we only have these years um, on, on earth. But yet you have this eternal life. What does that mean? It, does that mean that we have longer time on earth? Not really. We only have one lifetime on earth. But for Christians, our lifetime on earth, we can choose to prepare ourselves to enter into eternity. I actually studied in China in high school. And in China, the high school is very uh, arduous. And every day you had to wake up early and sleep late. You have non-ending papers and studies and tests. And there's endless goal in sight. But then I have this one friend. When everyone is studying very, very hard, he seemed very light and no pressure at all, very calm. When we're studying, everyone is um, putting their heads down to, to read more. And we're all very serious. As soon as the bell ring, we would start. As soon as the bell rings again, we would talk to about the things that we don't understand and ask other people. But this person, whether or not he shows up in self-study is all depends on his mood. He comes, he would just flip the books and then he would leave. So when I see him come, I would ask him immediately the things I don't understand because he's such a good student. I would ask him, how do I do this question? And he was like, isn't that obvious? How did you, I would ask, how did you arrive this obvious answer? Then he would say, isn't it just this and that? And then I would think about it and I still don't understand. So after the evaluation test for college, and this person was actually admitted to Tsinghua because he had early acceptance through recommendation. And where did I go? You all knew that. So at that time, I was very envious of these people who have early acceptance through the recommendation. Because they had a long, early time to spend and prepare for what they wanted to do after the evaluation test. And doesn't, he could have, have studied for college courses or prepare to study abroad. But what about me? And every day I lived. I lived in this fear of not knowing where I would go for college. So this early acceptance is actually really similar to our resurrection of hope. hope of resurrection. So when you believe in the Lord, you are actually you actually have this um, early acceptance. We don't have this fear of where we're going. Because we clearly know where our goal end is. 
Every person is afraid of death. And yet, through Lord Jesus Christ, God has given us the resurrection and also the gospel. And what about us? We have this offer of early acceptance. Should we prepare ourselves? Let us look back on Paul. He is in the midst of a trial. He has this danger of facing death. And yet he still had hope. Because his hope lies in the resurrection of the dead. He knows clearly that it doesn't matter what he experiences in this lifetime. Even if it means right now he is on trial, it's all to prepare him for his value in eternal life. Paul's proclamation here. It's not really to say that, oh, I don't, I'm not afraid of death, that I'm not afraid of danger. Rather, he clearly knows the danger that he is facing. And he is actually ready for martyrdom. What he is really trying to express here. He really hoped to tell people the essence of his faith, which is Jesus Christ has resurrected from the dead. Those who believe in him will gain eternal life. They will have this hope of resurrection. And yet with this, this great news, What's the reaction of the Pharisees and Sadducee? And it's surprising. They had a very surprising reaction. But they didn't think Paul was crazy. And they weren't joyful or saying, Wow, Paul, your message is amazing. Rather, after Paul said this, it caused a clamor and dissension amongst Pharisees and Sadducees. And what's interesting is, they didn't argue because they're trying to decide whether Paul is right or wrong. What they're really arguing is, I'm right, you're wrong. The essence behind what Paul really said is Jesus Christ's resurrection. Here, God wants to use Paul to spread this good news to the council and everyone in the assembly. But not only they didn't understand, and they want to express their own version of truth through their fleshly desires. God's word is not to be used to prove our own right or wrong. Yet it is to, for us to change ourselves. If we're not alert, we will fall into the same trap of these Pharisees and Sadducees. We have this cloak of righteousness, and yet we're displaying our own pride. So Paul's here, his, his testimony ended in the dissension amongst everyone. And because of this clamor amongst people, the tribune thinks it's no longer safe for Paul to stay here. Here, Paul, here God used Paul as the venue to speak God's own word to the council and the assembly. But in exchange, what what, what uh, outcome was all the clamor and dissension. So here, God let Tribune take Paul away, which took away the venue of God's word. 
and then they no longer have God's words amongst them. And if one day, your friend takes you um, past the darkness and yet comes dawn, when the sunrise comes, and you choose to close your own eyes, you will miss the beauty of the sunrise. This light of sunrise will not wait for you. And maybe perhaps you have a chance one day. And then you have passed the storm, you see the, the rainbow. And when the rainbow comes, you choose to turn your own head. And the rainbow will not be there to wait for you forever. So when God's word descends upon us, if we choose to not listen, to not ponder, to not obey, then God's word will be like the sunrise and rainbow, although very beautiful, it will not be able to enter a heart that is cold. So the wheel of fortune continues to turn. God keeps on giving people opportunities. And because we believe in Jesus Christ, we can choose to live for him. We can choose to not live for ourselves. We can choose to live to represent God. We can also choose to struggle and to strive in life so we can meet God. And for us who often hear of this great gospel, have we truly changed? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you are our God and you are often willing to speak to us. Please help us so that we can hear what you want to tell us and we are willing to obey your word so that the day when we meet you, you will greet us with a smile. We pray in Lord's precious name. Amen.